Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 7.4, Similarity in Right Triangles. So our essential question today is, in a right triangle, what is the relationship between the altitude to the hypotenuse, triangle similarity, and the geometric mean? And our goal is to be able to use similarity and the geometric mean to solve problems involving right triangles. So our vocab today uh, is going to be the geometric mean. So uh, we're going to uh, talk about um, right triangles in this lesson and uh, a theorem known as the um, altitude uh, to hypotenuse theorem. And so what it involves is um, you have a right triangle here, um, right triangle ABC, and we're going to draw an altitude coming straight um, from the right angle in, um, vertex C down to the hypotenuse AB. Uh, so when you draw an altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, it turns out that you form three similar right triangles. And this is what we've just done. So we drew an altitude uh, to the hypotenuse, and you notice that there are two, three right triangles um, that can be formed from this. There's the one on the left, the one on the right, and then the original large right triangle before it was divided. Turns out that these three triangles are similar, uh, and if we look at them in more detail, because we have two angles that are congruent between each pair of angles, we can claim that they're all similar by the angle-angle similarity theorem. All right, so uh, theorem 7-4 is the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides the triangle into two uh, triangles that are similar to the original and to each other. And so um, basically what we were stating earlier is that uh, if you're going from the right angle to the uh, hypotenuse um, with an altitude, then you form three similar right triangles. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, investigate this in example one. So if we want to find the missing angle, so for, for part A, um, we'll call this X and we'll call this Y. And what we'll do is we'll use the fact that these are similar triangles to be able to solve this. So we're going to use the uh, triangle on the left-hand side. And uh, we know that, well, we, we know according to this that PQR, which is the big, this big triangle, is uh, congruent to QSR. So in fact, we're gonna use the triangle on the right according to the similarity statement. However, we could use the triangle on the left as well. But given that they give us the similarity statement, we can go ahead and use it. So um, it states here that if we wanna find X, well, that's gonna be QS on the smaller uh, right triangle. And this uh, similarity statement on the right-hand side stands for the smaller right triangle. So uh, QS, um, according to the similarity statement, it corresponds to PQ. And uh, this makes sense because this is the longer leg and this is the longer leg on the big right triangle. So that makes sense. So X is to 20 as, now we're going to look at the uh, another side in the right triangle. So if we uh, look at, for instance, the uh, 15 side, we can see that this uh, fifth, uh, well, let's look at the nine side actually, because uh, let's see, uh, 15 here uh, for this example, if we look at the uh, nine side, for instance, this nine side, which is SR, relates to uh, QR in the big right triangle. Um, so that relates to this side. So uh, that's the perfect uh, set of sides to pick because we have two um, known values. And we can use this proportion to solve for x. So we're going to cross multiply here, leaving us with 15x equals 9 times 20, or 180. I'm going to divide by 15 on both sides. So go ahead and uh, divide that. 15 goes into 18 once, and uh, we'll have, uh, looks like it's about 12, so x is equal to 12. And we'll go ahead and replace this with 12 and uh, use this to solve for y. So uh, let's go ahead and use y here. Uh, now it says here that if we're trying to solve for ps, uh, and if we use this similarity statement, there's multiple ways that you can solve this. But uh, this time I'm going to um, use, well, I'm going to use this entire side because that involves y plus 9. But you could also use the um, small, the triangle on the left side to solve it. However, I'll use y plus 9. And we know that y plus 9 
uh, in this uh, big right triangle corresponds to uh, 15 on this uh, triangle here. So y plus 9 is pr, which is this one. And so that corresponds to qr. All right, so so it corresponds to 15 as the um, if we were to use this side 20, this side 20 corresponds to uh, this side, which is 9. And you can look at this from the similarity statement. It says here that PQ relate it corresponds with Uh, QS, so it should actually be this one right here. So 20 is to 12, rather, rather than 9. And now we can go ahead and cross multiply here. So we have here, uh, we're going to distribute this 12 into y plus 9. We'll do that in the next step. And that's equal to 15 times 20, which is 300. Now we'll go ahead and uh, distribute here. So we get 12y plus uh, 9 times 12 is... We have 108, which is equal to 300. We'll subtract 108 on both sides. So that's 192. And then finally, we'll divide by 12 on both sides. So we get y equals, we'll do this on, on the calculator here real quick. We get 16, so y is equal to 16. All right, so looking at the next example, we want to relate the uh, altitude to what we call the geometric mean. So uh, for this particular triangle, uh, we know that we have three similar right triangles because of the uh, theorem uh, 7, 4. And in this case, we want to find CD. So um, let's call, from we, we know from 7, 4 that the triangles are similar. So what we can do is set up a proportion where AD is to CD. In this case, 6.4 is to this unknown, which we can call X, or we'll just call it CD. And CD uh, is pro proportional to BD. If you um, were to look at the CD from this side, that's proportional to DB on the right-hand side. All right, and uh, if we cross multiply, we can see that we have CD squared equals AD times BD. And the, to get rid of the square root, to, to get rid of the squared, we take the square root on both sides. Uh, and so we can see that CD is the square root of the product of AD and BD. If we were to plug in the numbers, we would get uh, CD a value of 4.8. Now it turns out that this CD, which is the square root of this product, is known as the geometric mean. So the geometric mean of two numbers, uh, A and B, is given by the following formula. You take the uh, product of, you take the square root of the product of the two numbers. This is different than what we know as, know as the geometric or the arithmetic mean, which is normally what we think of as the average. So for example, if we wanted to take the average of 10 and 20, also known as the arithmetic mean, we simply add the two numbers and divide by how many numbers we have, which in this case is two. To find the geometric mean, we simply take the square root of the product. And notice that these numbers are pretty similar uh, since they are um, a certain type of average. So it makes sense that they will be similar to each other. So uh, this geometric mean is important as it relates to uh, the theorem 7-4. And this is cor uh, corollary one, a result of this uh, theorem, is that um, because we know that the triangles are similar, uh, kind of like how I showed you in the other slide, we know that uh, we can think of solving for CD, the altitude, as um, taking the geometric mean of, in this case, AD and BD. And those are the lengths of these segments of the hypotenuse. So in other words, in order to just go straight to the answer, we can simply take the square root of these two components and uh, get the answer right away for this altitude AD, uh, CD. 
The uh, other result of this corollary of this theorem is corollary two, which states that if um, I want to uh, find the legs of the uh, original right triangle, so if I wanted to find AC, that's simply going to be the geometric mean of AD and the total hypotenuse. If I wanted to get uh, BC, I simply take the geometric mean of DB and the hypotenuse, the total hypotenuse. And so these are the formulas. We can just use the geometric mean rather than having to set up the proportions. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, show you how this works. Given triangle RST, we want to find RT and ST. So we know that the uh, triangle RUT is similar to RTS, according to the theorem. So uh, we can set up a proportion. Um, so we know that RU is proportional to RT, and RT in this side is proportional to RS. So we can go ahead and set up the numbers here. Uh, RT, which is, um, you know, our unknown here is equal to um, RU or RT squared is RU times RS uh, and RS you recall is this whole thing. So we can plug in the numbers, uh, we can take the square root and then uh, plug in the numbers and we see that we get 9.6 plus 5.4 which is a total of 15, that's this total hypotenuse 15. And uh, so we take the product of this number and 15 as I mentioned earlier in the corollary two and then we get the geometric mean of RT. And this is the geometric mean uh, from that theorem. We can also use uh, the concept of the geometric mean for the uh, next part, ST. So in order to do ST, we can uh, think of it as, um, for which is this part, we can think of it as the geometric mean of this part and the total hypotenuse of 15. And we'll show you this with proportions, of course. So we know that SU, um, correspond uh, is proportional to ST and uh, ST is proportional to SR. So we can set up the numbers here and then find that we can take the square root of SU times SR as we mentioned earlier and uh, we plug in the numbers and we get 9. Alright so as we mentioned those are their geometric means so uh, we're going to uh, find the following values using uh, the idea of geometric means. So if I wanted to get uh, x, for instance, uh, well, we know that, for example, this is an altitude. And so if I wanted to get this altitude, I know that the altitude is equal to the geometric mean of the components of the hypotenuse that are broken up into. So we know that 6 is going to be the geometric mean of those two components there. Then we can use that to solve for x. So we're going to square both sides here. We get 36 equals, and the way to get rid of the square root is with the squared, so they cancel. And so we're going to distribute this x here, and that leaves us with x squared plus 5x. And so we got a quadratic equation here. We're going to subtract 36 just to make one side equal to zero. And it turns out we can set up a chart with um, negative 36 and five, the two numbers here. And that's gonna be nine and four, nine and negative four. Nine times negative four is 36, negative 36, and then you add those to get five. So we can factor this into zero equals x plus nine, x minus four using the two numbers here. And uh, set each of these equal to zero, so x would have to be negative nine to make this zero, and x would have to be four to make that zero. So we have two solutions, but obviously only one of them can be viable, and it's gonna be x equals four, uh, because we can't have a negative number for a side. So therefore, x is equal to four. All right, so in order to find y, uh, we're going to make use of the geometric mean of the leg here. So to get y, well y, which is the leg, is the geometric mean of the this part next to it, the closest uh, thing next to it, which is x, and the total hypotenuse. Now the total hypotenuse is, you gotta add these together. So it's gonna be x plus x plus five, 
which is 2x plus 5. So it's going to be x times 2x plus 5 here. And we already know what x is, so we can plug in uh, x into this equation. So we have the square root of 4 times 8 plus 5. So we have the square root of 4 times 13. And the square root of 4 times 13 is roughly 7.2. Now let's go ahead and find z. Now z is the geometric mean of the closest part next to it, which is um, x plus 5 and the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the product of x plus 5 and 2x plus 5. And then we plug in the value for x, so 4 plus 5 is 9, and then 8 plus 5 is 13. We get a value roughly 10.8 to the nearest tenth. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you found this useful. I hope you uh, took a few couple of things from this lesson. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.